Hello with the Corset Authority. We're here in Wenatchee, Washington with Orchard Corset at their headquarters with Sherry of Orchard Corset. Here from the Corset Authority, we have Brandy, Scarlett, and myself, uh, Heidi, a guest moderator and also the face behind Straight Lace Dame. We're very happy to be here, Sherry. We really appreciate having the opportunity to come out here and meet you, see the warehouse, and also be able to ask you a few questions about the company. It's really a very exciting prospect. Well, we are so excited that you all have joined us here for this week. We just we love it when we get to have experts come and visit us. We get to learn, you get to learn. It's great. Thank you for coming. And with that, we'd like to launch into some questions. Perfect. <laughs> I guess I'll start with, um, for those who may not know the story, can you give us a 60 second history lesson on the business we know as Orchard Corset? Sure. Um, Jeff and Leanna Kirpus, um, who grew up here in Wenatchee, started the business in the late 90s as a vintage clothing and they used to sell on eBay when eBay was a brand new you know, entity that nobody had ever heard of. And through their business dealings in buying other products, they uh, met a gentleman in New York City named Ralph who owned the Orchard Corset Discount Center, he's been in his family since 68. and they eventually just entered into a partnership where we had the warehouse and the products here, and he has the brick and mortar store there. And um, when I first came to work for Orchard Corset, I just assumed it was called Orchard Corset because here in the Wenatchee Valley, we are known for orchards. We have apples, orchards, pear orchards, orchards everywhere. And it turns out it's because of the Orchard Corset Discount Center on Orchard Street in Manhattan. So it's an interesting fun fact for me too. Okay, how have you seen the design and construction techniques used in the corsets you sell evolve over time? Um, well, we have reduced the number of manufacturers that we use, number one, so that we can kind of keep a tighter rein on what it is that we want our corsets to look like. One of the early issues that we had with some of our corsets were um, grommets that would snag. And, you know, a lot of that actually was brought to our attention um, through Lucy's website. And so that's been a big change that we have made um, over the last year with our corsets. Um, some of the other, we've, we've added some cosmetic changes, you know, so for the long lines, the 426 and the 511s, we've actually added garter tabs to the bottom because people wanted to wear them with, you know, they're long enough and they look nice with a pair of stockings and, and garter extensions. Um, another suggestion actually that we got through our dealings with Lucy was to, to try to get the satin fused because it prevents some of the wrinkling. And mm -hmm. so some of the newer corsets, we've been working on that, at least on the front panels to have um, satin fusion in the corsets. So those are probably the biggies for us. Okay, and what do you see as the most beneficial stride to forward you've made in construction quality since starting the company? Hmm, the most beneficial, well, a grommets probably would be, I mean, that was, it sounds like something so simple, but to have a perfectly good corset and the only thing that's wrong with it is that the grommets are snagging and you can't use the corset, you know, what, what a waste is that? Um, you know, one, occasionally we get issues with um, boning and that's something else that, you know, we're trying to figure out a way to, I, I think if we could make sure that the boning channels were completely filled every mm -hmm. time and that the, that the, so that's something else that we're are currently working on also is to get, you know, the bones to come end to end in the corset and not have room for play because I think that leads to boning that pops through. But I definitely think it's, it's just, it sounds so simple, but just getting the grommets to smooth out. And, and we still occasionally will catch one. Um, but you know, we're always re really good about that with our customers. You know, we replace the corset when it's when it's got an issue like that. But they are far and few between now. It used to be a pretty semi-regular occurrence. I think, the corsets, and that's fantastic. I mean, I know that Orchard Corset really touts itself on quality corsets at um, at an affordable price. Right. And of course, it's difficult to balance both of those two. I mean, which of those, quality or cost or affordability, have you really encountered the most roadblocks in achieving? Really, I think it's quality because affordability, I think, almost falls completely um, on us. You know, that that really comes from how well we manage to streamline our business and um, efficiencies that we have put into the warehouse that help keep costs down. So we have a little bit more control, but as we are not the manufacturer of the corsets, that's where we don't have as much control. And so we have to really work with our manufacturers, um, or currently manufacturer, um, and it, it, there's sometimes it's, you know, there's a lot of distance between us and where the, the corsets are made, and it, there's a lot of back and forth when you're trying to get something accomplished, whether it's a, a different style technique or just having, um, even with the boning, and so to me that, that has definitely been more of a challenge for us. You know, we have to get them in and you, you figure out what's wrong and you send it back. So I think definitely affordability, we have so much more control over it than we do, um, than we do quality. Um, 
Orchard has already debuted one new silhouette this year. Do you see any others being released before 2014 is up? Well, we do. You know, we just popped out that new little mini wasp corset that we, um, I, several of you have already had a chance to try on, the 301. It just so happens that on this trip also, we picked up a prototype that I have tried out that's fabulous um, that has been designed by Lucy, and it's a level four corset. It'll be very similar to the 426, um, but it'll have an extra several inches um, in the hip. And there's a few other little design changes. You know, we don't want to give away too much because you have to wait. But um, <laughs> it's, we're really excited about it. We have had people wanting that level four for a, while. for a very long time. You know, there's just people who really do a lot of waist training, number one, need it. But then there are just women who um, really just have a larger hip spring mm -hmm. and um, that could really, really benefit from not having, you know, Uneven laces. Mm -hmm. Really uneven laces, right. Do you think we'll see any of those in production before the year is up? Um, I'm hoping that the that the first level four we should have in production, I think, before the year's out. So we should have oh, that excited. in time for Christmas, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we'll ask Santa for one. That's right. <laughs> okay. So without a doubt, you re receive requests and suggestions regarding your products on a daily basis, be that for new fabrics, colors, or silhouettes. What kind of work does it take on your end once a decision is made that a produ product is worth developing, improving, and bringing out to the market? You know, it's challenging even just to choose because, you know, you, you try to go out to your your fans on social media and, you, you know, I'll write a blog or we'll post some pictures on Instagram or Facebook. Oh, do you like this and do you like that? And a lot of people like things, but that doesn't mean they want to buy things, mm -hmm. right? And, yes. uh, you know, I just can think back of some corsets that I have discontinued over the past year, like the purple 511 Overbust. And as soon as you do it, you have, oh, why? I just love the purple. Everybody loves the purple. Well, nobody was buying the purple. You know, I'm, I'm glad that you all loved it, but nobody wanted to buy it. And so it's a little bit tricky to try to choose, um, especially when it's something just as simple as a fabric change. So we already know the corset's good, and all we need is a, is a new print or a new fabric. And once we decide, we, we bring in, we try to bring in several different sizes. We test them. You know, I wear it around for a while. We, we have other people on our staff. Sometimes we send them out to our, you know, folks like you to see how they work, especially if it's a, a brocade print or something that we're worried might wear or tear because it's a little too fancy, perhaps. Um, and once we've really made that decision that, okay, this looks like it's going to hold up because that, that matters. When you're selling off the rack corsets and you're selling them to the masses, you're selling them to people that aren't always um, the most tender with their <laughs> products, right? So you want to make sure that it's going to hold up and that it's going to wear and it, two months after somebody buys it, they're not going to say, hey, you know, this tore here. I mean, that's one of the reasons we got rid of the 426 lace overlays. I mean, they were beautiful corsets, but, you know, lace can be tricky and um, it just, it, it wasn't worth it for quality control to try to keep that try to keep that product in. And so once we do that, we test it, and then we order in a line. And our, our new policy that we're doing now, we used to just bring them in when we decide, and, and then you integrate a new product in, and then what if it doesn't really work? So I've kind of gone with the model of, I bring something in as a limited edition. And that way I, I don't have to restock it. If it, you don't have to order in, oh, we're getting low on the 24s. I, I, we can take a look and say, hey, Everybody, this is a good product, or this is a, a good choice we chose in this print or this fabric. People are wanting it, and then we can make it a part of our, you know, of our actual permanent line of 411s or 426s or whatever course it is that we're trying to add, as opposed to that bringing it, trying to keep it socked, and realizing after six months, mm, maybe this wasn't as popular as, as what our social media indicated that it might be. So, and here we are in Wenatchee, in rural Washington. I mean. Certainly, there must be some advantage to having a business like this located here as opposed to some metropolitan area. Can you enlighten us a little on that? I can. You know, it's funny that you asked that question because we just had to answer this question at a, at a economic development district meeting that we had here in North Central Washington. And you may not know this, but here in Wenatchee or in Chelan County and then across the river is Douglas County and then Grant County is the cheapest power in the world. We have the dams here. We pay like two cents a kilowatt hour. It's it's extremely inexpensive. We have the mighty Columbia River here that's dammed up and down the river, and we are, reap the benefits of that really inexpensive power. We also have a complete fiber infrastructure, thanks to the dams, because they have made sure that fiber runs all the way through the whole valley. So we have the high-speed internet. It's already here. And it's rural enough that you can get land here for a whole lot less than what you can get land 
in Bellevue or Seattle or LA or San Francisco or New York, which is why the warehouse is, you know, here. And um, the quality of life here is, is amazing. I mean, you've all have been here for just a day or two. So, I mean, we really do live in this beautiful valley. We've got the river. We have mountains all around us. We have four distinct seasons here. You know, it's triple digits in the summer, but lots of snow and skiing in the winter. So you kind of get a little bit of everything. So it's easy to um, recruit talent if you need it, you know, and bring in employees from other areas because it's a beautiful place to live. And it's not a very expensive place to live. So we can offer, you know, the purposes are awesome. You know, they pay their employees well, they treat their employees well. So we're able to really, that gives you an edge. If you're trying to compete with some other business that is similar to yours, whether it's corsets or whether it's purses or whatever it is that you're trying to sell online, you're going to, your costs for doing business are going to be a lot less than if you are a big city USA. There's just, the benefits really are, are many. <laughs> Sounds like it. Um, do you see the use of corsets trending, leveling, or decreasing within the next five years? Um, I would definitely say they are increasing. I think we've only just really started to see um, the increase in corset use and the more mainstreaming of corsets. And a lot of it is, you know, waist training is becoming a popular thing. I think more people are also discovering the other benefits of corseting. Um, honestly, I think part of it is the corsets are trending, but part of it is just the accessibility of information um, as more and more people have access to the internet and things that they didn't even know existed they're they're finding and as more people decide they want to have a blog or have a, a YouTube channel there's just more and more mouthpieces out there and some of that's good and some of that's bad as you know <laughs> it's not not all information is good information that you find on the internet but it has still made it so much more accessible to people that would never have even known they existed you know I had before I came to work for Orchard Course and I thought people wear corsets you know I had no idea and that's only been two years ago and I didn't even know that this company was here in my town because we don't have a retail outlet here and um, so I definitely think we're only just now seeing corsets rise okay. and so we understand that OC makes a point of giving back with giving giveaways and just anything are there any causes or charities in specific that Orchard Corset is particularly invested in? Well, you know, when I was talking with um, Jeff about this, he called me up shortly afterwards and he said, well, you know, we actually give large chunks of money to the United States government. <laughs> and I said, I don't, don't really think that's what they meant. <laughs> um, we don't have a particular charity that we work with. Um, we do, of course, as you know, um, give, I mean, I, hundreds upon hundreds of course it's away every year for various reasons. Um, I do get requests often from from a variety of charities, not just one in particular, um, that are putting on a benefit. And it's if it's in a community, a rockabilly community or a pinup community, um, we'll donate either product or a gift certificate for somebody to use on the site. Um, I think really he takes. I don't know that I'd consider us all charities, but he really takes really good care of his um, employees and staff. You know, the team members that we have at Orchard Corset. It's extremely generous. Um, you know, uh, they really, you know, people sing their praises all the time, but, you know, I've, I've worked for a lot of different people and I've been around, you know, the block a few times and I have never worked for um, people like Jeff and Leanna who really, really care and are not in this, you know, so they can go buy a new house. You know, they are in this to leave the world a better place than where they came. They want to provide good jobs for people. They, that's, you know, that is their goal. And so it's kind of refreshing to work for someone who, that, that is what he's about, is, is making, making the world a better place. And clearly showing some care for his employees <laughs> and his fans, of mm -hmm. course, as well. And, and another way that Orchard Corsa gives back is by uh, bringing bloggers and vloggers here to have a conversation. I mean, where did that right. idea get started? You know, it was funny. We started with Lucy, and I, and I can't remember exactly the origins, but I do remember there was... A, a question that Lucy had, and I, Jeff started to talk to me, and finally said, you know, I'd really like to meet Lucy. I think if she could meet us, you know, she would see that we're good people. And so we did this, we brought her out, and it really kind of evolved from there. And um, we thought, well, wow, we've got one here. We've got this one great mind and this great resource. And really, I, my, I had been trying to learn about corsets, and I tell you, just the hour that I spent with Lucy, my suddenly my knowledge went from you know here to here you know that was like oh it just gave me this whole wealth of 
knowledge that then allowed me to learn even more. And so that's kind of where that concept came from. Well, if we can have Lucy, what if we even brought in more? What if we brought in more people that, that knew what they were talking about, that we could maybe exchange ideas with and learn information for and just kind of spread that whole safe and sane corseting and just, I don't know, we, that's really where it came from. And, and we thought it would be fun, the images, you know, providing the imagery that we do for our website. We do that, A, for us, but who doesn't want to look at, you know, gorgeous pictures? Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> you know, and, it, and it's, it is, we see it as a win-win because it's good for us, but we figure it's great exposure, too, for the young gals that get to come out and experience something that they might not have a chance to experience otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we absolutely appreciate this opportunity. It's been fantastic so far. And we want to thank you for putting aside a little bit of time yeah. to let us uh, get some of these answers out of you. It's all been very, very helpful. Pleasure. Pleasure is mine, really. It's been great. I've learned a lot already. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Sherry. Thank you. And everyone, take care.